Hello, welcome to United Church of High Park. It's so good to see you guys this, well, I don't actually see you, but it's good to have you. Oh, I do see you. Thank you for helping me out. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Yesterday morning, we had open breakfast. That means we served breakfast to go. People could come and they could get their breakfast and they could go. And we had some of our usuals, but we had some people that we met on the street. Anyway, one of our usuals shared with me that one of the things she enjoys doing is looking at our marquee. Every week she looks over to see what's on it because she expects it to be something deep and profound that causes her to think and inspires her. She looks toward that marquee. I realize that as some of you join us today, you may not physically be looking at the marquee, but you do look to United to provide something. We look to God to be the inspiration and author of our book, our life, our hope. And so we welcome you here today. And we're so grateful that you look toward this church, but more importantly, that you look toward your relationship with God. We welcome you here, whether you're here for the first time or you happen just to be floating over the social media and you landed on our page, we hope that you will stay a while. Welcome friends, welcome members, welcome allies. Welcome to United Church of High Park. lead us into lives of service and obedience. We will complete Jesus' hopes by putting others before ourselves. We come so that the Spirit can help us to empty ourselves for God and those around us. We will complete the Spirit's peace by sharing our lives with others. 
know right now we could use some shine Jesus shine and some light shining today we are still in the book of Exodus we are in the 17th chapter and I hope because you guys kind of see where we've been going that you are reading those chapters in between and getting the complete story of the Israelites and their journey in the wilderness so today we are in chapter 17 and we are reading verses 1 through 7. Verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rehobam, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and livestock? with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at, Dora, at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Let us take a moment and pray. Lord, we are still a community of faith as we get ready to partake of this meal that you have set before us. Lord, allow us to get here to be fully present in this moment. Continue to open us up in ways that we hear a familiar story differently, in ways that it may speak to us and tickle us and ignite us and pull us further into this text and our relationship with you. O Lord, Jehovah Jireh, continue to be with us on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, the journey is long, the journey is long. The first surgery I had in my life was overnight. That means I come in one day and they say you go home the next and you should be back to work in a short period of time. So I came in, I spent the night and the next day they sent me home, but I was not feeling well. I was not taking to that surgery at all. I could barely walk and friends had to help me and day after day, I didn't really feel much better. And so I called my doctor, but in this fast climate, my doctor assured me that I was healing fine, I was doing fine, and that I was just worrying about nothing. After a couple of weeks, I still felt like I was getting considerably worse. I called after hours, and again, they assured me that I was fine. I was okay. And then one night, I woke up in the middle of the night and I could hear myself breathing. I could hear myself wheezing, and I became scared. And that night I determined that somebody would have to see me. That even though I was being assured that I was okay, I wasn't sure that I was okay. So the next morning I took my son to school and called the doctor and they said they were booked. They couldn't see me today. I said, somebody has to see me. And so they assigned me to the nurse assistant. They had me come in. You're fine, Ms. Hill. They did all my vitals. I looked good. And on my way out, my primary doctor passed me, and he talked to me for a moment. And he said, why don't we just give her chest x-rays just, just to check her out before we send her back? Shortly thereafter, my doctor fussed at me about why I had not been in sooner, which was ironic to me. And he announced that I should have been in a week ago, and they sent me straight to the hospital. I was not to get back home for another week. I was to be in the hospital, I was diagnosed with advanced pneumonia. That day when I left home, I was expecting to come back home. I left like most of us, expecting that well, I might get some medication, there might be a little something wrong with me. But that became a journey, a journey that did not kind of go the way I anticipated. Sometimes we leave home and things happen. I know often I ask Alvin, how did your week go? And he's like, I'd be having some funny weeks, Pastor. <laughs> Oftentimes when we go into the world, things do not happen the way that we think that they should or could happen. Sometimes the journey is different and sometimes the journey is long. Today in our country, in our worlds, we are on what appears to be a long journey. The Israelites had come out of Egypt, and they too were on a journey. Leaving Egypt is one thing, but being in the wilderness is another. And they were out in the middle of nowhere. The wilderness has some habitation, but it is a space of arduous length that calls on a spiritual depth that many of us do not have, if we're honest. For the Israelites, certainly the excitement of escaping Egypt had worn off. And this arduous stretching had started them complaining. And the Lord responded at first on last Sunday, we learned, with substance. But in this liminal space, in this wilderness, the temptation to complain returns to them repeatedly, and they are unable to resist. They hadn't reached the promised land, but they were no longer in Egypt, and this journey, this journey was long. 
The thing about road trips and long journeys is it requires preparation on our part. Every year in early October, we have the Chicago Marathon here. People gather from all over the world. There are marathons that happen all over the world in other countries, and at each of these marathons, thousands and thousands, over 10,000 people arrive from other spaces, other countries, other states, to run in these marathons. We know folks right here in our own congregation who have participated. We're very proud to know Duane Brown, who runs in the Chicago Marathon. And last year, he shared a story of seeing one sister who had broken down, who wanted to give up. Her family took her in and embraced her. And then he said they, they gently pushed her out and encouraged her to run the race. But here's the thing, United. No one wakes up and says, hey, I think I'll run in the marathon today. That's not what happens. According to those who have run in marathons, marathons require a lot of preparation. It requires a lot of training. At least six months before you participate in a marathon, you have to begin exercising your body and running so many miles a day. And even after all of the preparation, I hear that the marathon is still gut-riching. There's a point in the marathon where you feel like you can't run anymore. But preparation makes it possible. Important for long journeys is that we prepare by spending quality time with God. Larnell Harris wrote these words, I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day. And it hurts me when you say you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. In case you haven't figured that out, that's kind of like God talking to us. Whether it's reading, or going to a Bible study, or singing, or praying, or meditating, or, gar or gardening, wherever, whatever, it is vital to our spiritual journey to spend quality time with God, all by ourselves, all by our lonesome self, us and God. God misses God's time with us. Time spent with God prepares us for the journey. Time with God lays a foundation. Time with God anchors us so that when the winds of adversity come or we're watching CNN and we don't like what we see, we're anchored. Time with God builds us from the inside out so that we are not rocked by the world. Moses consulted with God often. Moses stayed in the presence of God. He was honest and he would let God know, your people are complaining again. Look, this is what you told me to do last time. What do you want me to do with your people? Because see, these are your people. Moses is like, God, you got me into this. Now it's time you get me out. I need to hear a word from you right now. Your people are getting on my last nerve. I know y'all felt like that sometimes. <laughs> what have you got for me, God, to handle? And every time God would speak and give Moses a word for the people. But Moses nor us can do it alone. We can't run this journey alone. The beauty of this journey is that we are not alone, even at times when we feel like it. They would complain, and Moses would talk to God, and God would respond. This was the scenario that happened over and over and over again in the wilderness. Lyricist and musician Robert Critchley had been on a journey. His words, his words, had been on this journey for a while to find peace and contentment. He had tried to fill the void in his life several ways, but nothing yielded success. He joined a Bible study and with guidance developed a relationship with God. 
And then he began to follow Jesus, and something changed for him as he spent time with God. He would go on to meet his wife, and he would begin to use his talent to write and sing music. He would write 27 songs, and one of them is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less Than Jesus' Blood and Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Robert discovered that he was not alone. In 1990, the movie was released, The Long Walk Home based on the 1957 bus boycott made up of significant number of maids who used the buses to get to work, to work for their white, rich families. This boycott was one attempt to end desegregation by hitting the powers that be financially. Lots of prayer went forth. Drivers were organized to get the women to work, but still there were some that had to take the long journey to get to work. This boycott had been in the making for a long time, a long journey. This boycott was in the making long before Rosa Parks ever refused to give up her seat. And a year before Rosa Parks, Mary Lou Smith was arrested for challenging the segregation of the Montgomery bus. And a year before that, Claudette Coughlin refused to give up her seat. Oh, the journey, the journey is long. The Women's Political Council tried like Moses to talk to their oppressor, but hearts were hardened. The boycott happened and finally it lasted for a whole year before the Supreme Court ruled segregation of buses unconstitutional. But the journey, the journey was, was long. Amy Coney Barrett. Donald Trump's nominee for Supreme Court Justice, in her acceptance speech yesterday said, I have no illusion that the road ahead of me will be either for the short term or long haul easy. Reminding me that this journey that we are on is long. It most certainly was for the Israelites and in this same week, the cops involved in the shooting of Breonna Taylor are not being charged at all for homicide. As our streets fill with protesters all over the world, I read one protester sign that caught my eyes. Sorry, Breonna, that this is taking so long. And I realize whether right or left, the journey for justice and unity is long. The journey is long. It may not come tomorrow. For Abraham, it didn't come in his lifetime. But I'm, willing to, I'm not willing to give up hope. And I think neither should God's people. We're going to be OK. We are going to be OK. Last night, my son started bleeding. I'm not sure where he got the message from, but whenever he bleeds, he thinks he's dying, however small the amount is. And so in my household last night, there was high drama. He's running around screaming, I'm bleeding, I'm dying, I'm dying. My patience was running low, and the empathy cabinet was bare. I'm like, son, you're not dying. We've been down this road before. You don't care, I'm dying, I'm bleeding. Like, life might be really hard. And I want to say to you all, we're going to be OK. We're not dying. We might be bleeding. And we're going to be OK. I want to assure you, like I tried to assure my son, we are going to be OK. A little bit of blood, a little bit of sweat, a little bit of thirst. Just like God had the Israelites, God's got the whole world in God's hand. This story about the Israelites, it ought to inspire us. They got to know what they were really made of, and they came to know their God.
Their relationship solidified in the wilderness. Spend some time with people and your relationship will either be made or it will not. But the challenge they kept facing was not to lose hope and not to lose their way. We may be thirsty in the wilderness, we may be hungry, but we are not to give up hope. We are not to give up. We might not be able to see a brighter tomorrow, but we are not to give up. The journey is long, but we must be steadfast in our commitment to hope. I began today by reflecting on leaving home one day and thinking I would return, and I didn't. How sometimes life takes us on unexpected journeys. I know that some of you probably have been on some unexpected journeys in your life. This year has not been short on delivering <laughs> setbacks and long journeys. Our two-week sheltering turned into a long journey. Our civil unrest has turned into a long journey. Our division between the right and the left has turned into a long journey. Our education and health systems and the disparity that exists among them has turned into a long journey. Our attempts at keeping it together and surviving has turned into a long journey. 204,000 people have died to COVID in the United States. 994,000 have died globally. And our journey is not over yet even as we look for a vaccine. There is immense sadness and grief in our communities, and this journey is not over yet. No doubt, the journey is long, but we are not to lose hope. The journey is long, but we, like the Israelites, are not alone. The journey is long, but we have our God and we have each other. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, sometimes we see blood and we panic. Sometimes we listen to the news and we panic. Lord, sometimes we hear bad news and we panic. And that dirt thirst runs deep. But remind us that you still have us in your hand. Remind us that you are still with us. Remind us that we are not to lose hope. Allow us to surrender in this moment, to accept that we are loved by you, to do what we can, to grieve in the spaces that we need to grieve, and to prepare ourselves for the journey. Amen. Amen. journey the journey the journey
The journey is long, and that's why we need your offering. That's a poor joke. It is offering time, <laughs> and we need your financial resources. We thank you, as always, for your giving. We um, are able to do what we do. We're able to bring you a quality service, and we are doing some other things because of your support. We do not know when we will all be back in this, sir, this congregation again, but with your funding and with your financial support, we are able to bring you a quality service. We are able to look into the future and know that the future is bright for us. So we invite you to share. You know the three ways you can give. You can give electronically, you can stop by the church, or you can mail it in. Um, if you are watching online, someone mentioned last week having a problem getting to our tithing page, you can copy the link and then paste it in your uh, web address, or you can go to our website page. We don't want it to be complicated. We want it to be easy. So in this preparation for the journey being long, please, please, please share your financial resources. Amen. Amen. abundance and even our scarcity. Loving God, may we empty ourselves of our desire for more, but seek to share grace and share love and hope and wonder with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hello, United. <laughs> I'm getting more feedback with the few than I did with the... It is good to experience and believe in the spirit that you guys are out there. Next Sunday, we will be having community, and someone gave me the idea that I should invite you all to bake your own unleavened bread at home for communion. And so I want to encourage you, because it hit me at the ninth hour this morning, on allrecipe.com, or if you want... All you need is flour, vegetable oil, salt, and water to make your own unleavened bread. It's easy to do a Google search, and it would be really exciting for, if you um, 
decided to bake this bread, to take pictures and send it to us. We'd love to use it in some of our media. So if you decide to bake bread for next Sunday and uh, be ready, it might be exciting to have the aroma of bread in your home if you're worshiping from home. Um, there will be individual communion available for those who are in worship here today. Every Sunday, we are calling people to do something where they put their faith into action. Otherwise, sometimes we can get discouraged and feel like there's nothing we can do. And so this week, we're calling people to support the human rights in the Philippines. There is a link on your screen where simply you can go and send information to your senator and your elected officials in support of the Philippine Human Rights Act that blocks U.S. funding for police or military assistance to the Philippines, including equipment and training until such human rights conditions are met. We've learned that through $195 million worth of military aid, that we have empowered um, some people in the Philippines to do unjust acts, and we don't want to do that. So we are asking you to sign off on this. You can read up and learn about it. If it agrees with you, then we ask you to click the button and support the Philippine Humane Rights Act. That is our faith in action for today. Again, next Sunday, uh, we will begin to um, uh, cultivate a sense of people wanting to make a financial commitment for 2021. And also next Sunday, we will have communion and we invite you to think of the different ways that manna is manifested all over the world and bring that into your space. We thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope you'll get out and enjoy some of this weather. Seems like it's going down a little in terms of uh, the, the temperature, but it's still warmer than it, what it will be in a couple of months. So we, we hope that you'll get out and enjoy the weather. We also hope that something was said today that blesses you, that encourages you, um, that keeps you connected to this community. Uh, continue to give us shout outs and give us messages. If there's music you wanna hear, uh, let us know about it. Uh, we would love to know, but continue to communicate with us on Facebook and Zoom and other means. And thank you again for uh, worshiping with us today at United Church of Hyde Park. At this time, we're gonna have a closing selection and then we'll do the benediction and we will send you into the world. Let us have the same mind as God. We will see each person as God's child on a journey. Let us have the same justice as Jesus. We will stand with each person in community who struggles for equity. Let us have the same hope as the Spirit. We will remember that hope is ever before us. Go into the world. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen.